Good morning and welcome to the Cartier Women's Initiative webinar. We're talking today about how to build a support network. And I think for all of us women in particular, we understand why this is extremely important. My name is Shalakwe Hammond. I'm CEO of Impact Hub Lagos. And Impact Hub Lagos is part of a global network that aims to support entrepreneurs working in social impact around the world. Um, we have over 100 plus, with more than 16,000 members across the world. I've been supporting the Karchi Women's Initiative for upwards of 10 years now, and I'm always very excited to meet the wonderful finalists that are part of the program. So without much ado, we're going to spend the next hour talking to some of these amazing finalists. So I'll let them introduce themselves, starting with Jenny Chu. Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Yanjong Jenny Chu. Um, I will go by Jenny. I am the CEO of Say Global, which is an edutech company based in Korea. Um, at Say, we train retired seniors to become Korean language tutors, and we connect them with um, students all around the world via our curriculum and our online platform. Um, our vision is to build the largest global network for seniors and youth. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Um, and I'll hand over now to Mike Margaret. Hi, my name is Margaret Magdesian, and I'm the founder and CEO of Ananda Devices. And we produce small scaffolds where we can grow mini human brains on a chip so we can make drug discovery faster and much more cost effective than current technologies. Thank you. That sounds amazing. I, I think I need to borrow a few, get some brains from you. Um, I'll hand over last now to Hiba. My name is Dr. Hiba Shata. I am from Saudi Arabia. I live in Dubai. I am the CEO and founder of Maharat Learning Center. We work with children with special um, needs, autism spectrum disorders, behavioral uh, challenges, and prepare them for mainstream schools, support them inside school, and help them to access to university. And if they don't manage to be in mainstream, we have created an academy where they, we can, where we, they learn um, uh, skills to enable them to work in the field of technology. Thank you, Hiba. This is an impressive and inspiring group of women doing amazing things. And uh, to me, it seems like you must all be pioneers in your industry. And we all know that the journey for entrepreneurship can be very lonely. So how do you, how do you get support in those times, particularly when times get tough? I'll start again with you, Jenny. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, when when we have problems, like issues within the company, obviously I go to my co-founders. I have two other co-founders um, to discuss about these issues and how we can um, resolve these problems. So I would say my co-founders are the first ones that I talk to. And then if there are problems that I um, that we cannot um, resolve by ourselves. We definitely um, reach out to our advisors and our mentors. Um, we have a lot of friends in um, in this startup world, um, so we definitely reach out to other people to open up about what we're going through. And usually, they're able to um, help us because they're going through very similar problems as entrepreneurs. Um, so, yeah, I think for us. It's all about being transparent and being open, and it definitely helps to just talk about it with others going through the you know similar journey. Okay, so where you're very lucky to have co-founders, they're, they're definitely a very good group of people to go to. Um, um, how about you, Hiba? Who do you turn to when times get hard and you need another opinion? Um, when you are um, at the top, it is everybody is looking up to you. They are looking for inspiration. They look for the direction. They want to see your vision. Um, their expectation is very high. Um, everybody's expecting you not to make any mistake. Everybody's expectation of you is to be perfect and to be the mother of everybody, like you are the guide for everyone. So it's very hard for you to be on the top and be able to discuss um, everything with everyone you have to really have a mind 
um, a mind like people that you can network with where you can discuss issues um, and struggles and challenges that they also have in common at their uh, workplace I go to coaches I do have a coach and um, it helped me a lot um, during difficult times um, and it is very important that you had you find the right people to support you when it comes to financial decisions, um, recruitment decisions. There are so many uh, skills that we lack, not because all of us are professionals, we're experts in our field, but when it comes to management and and and, and um, uh, finance and other areas, you always need some direction coming from experts. Um, networking is very important as well, and we would be discussing this more in details in the coming hour. Thank you. That's a really great point. And so you've gone beyond um you've gone to the point of actually formalizing this process and having a, a proper coach or an official coach and i like the fact that you talked about different areas of expertise so you as the leader are expected to solve everyone's problems but you don't necessarily have all the answers for all the different areas so i think it's it's a really great point to bring out that you can have people who help you in some of the other areas where you may not have the expertise um uh, margaret any, any thoughts to share on, on how you find support when you're learning? I'm in line with Hiba. I think uh, it's a very lonely journey. Everyone expects a lot from us. And I have coaches as well. as, a, as So we have a, a network of, of entrepreneurs around us that are helping you know, in different issues, such as patents, finances, and everything else. But we have a personal coach from the CEO organization. It's an organization to uh, stimulate and motivate female CEOs. And it has been a, a, a very nice journey. While um, I have used other coaches before, but with them, I really feel like-minded and, and connected. Okay, wonderful. So thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. Um, and I'm glad you, 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 about your point, Margaret, about CEOs, because that takes us into a little segue around the kinds of networks that women have. So she is, is doing a great job in terms of providing a network for women. Um, but research actually shows that women's networks are typically less effective than men's networks in terms of the actual value that we get out of them. What do you think the reasons behind these are and how do you think we can make them more, more, more effective? Maybe we should start with you, Margaret, because you actually have the personal experience of you know, working with a women's network. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I like a lot the, the CEO model because it's completely different than other models. I've been to many accelerators and, and group with where the majority were, were, I'm a woman in tech, so I'm always a minority. And I have been to other networks, which were plenty of males. And they have all this networking uh, activities like, let's go play basketball together. Let's go for a beer after work. And I have kids. I don't want to go with them for a beer. I want to pick up my kids from school. So, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, we, we have a different mindset. And, and the CEO group always make breakfasts and lunches and for networking, which for me, you know, it's a small change. But it's something that I can go to, that I enjoy going to, that does not interfere with my home side. Um, so I think, you know, it's just a, a certain mind change in people that maybe female do not want to go uh, play basketball in the afternoon, but we, we have different issues, different interests, um, different models of seeing things. And, and I think uh, Shio explores it very well. You know, most of the events for women at work, the food is always amazing. When we go to uh, men events, it's always pizza or something horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so generally speaking, <laughs> We have to find a different model from the catering <laughs> to the activity. I think that's a really great point, but I'm glad women's networks at least score one in that area because I love food. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you make a really great point. So I think one thing men have done really well is to incorporate business as part of life. So one of the things I noticed after a while was conversations men have when they meet up with friends, any man they meet, they start to talk about business, they look at areas for synergy. We women talk about our family issues, at least most of the women I know, kind of keep business separate. It's a separate compartment of our lives. So when we meet our family, we may not often talk about business or talk about other issues. But men have incorporated it, so then business aspect is part of everything that they do. Um, so we seem to need to find that balance between um, 
a way to incorporate it basically as part of our lives as well, which means incorporating it in the activities that we like as opposed to the activities that men like. Um, any thoughts on that, Heba? Oh, sorry, you're on mute. No. Yes, um, in terms of networking, men are good at that. I mean, um, it's uh, natural and it, they have confidence. When it comes to mo women, they are ch more challenging. It's more challenging for them, especially when they enter the men's world. So they need to network with men and it's not within their comfortable zone. So it is an art. I always say it's an art and a skill and you need to understand how to present your message, your image, your um, your business to the public, including you know, it doesn't matter what gender it is, but it's to give the right impression that you want to leave. It's not only for you, but you also have to include your team, your people in your organization. You have to align the message that is sent out across everyone so that clarity is there, people understand what you are offering. When it comes to business network, um, it is important that we have um, a tactic or a strategy and if you are, um, um, if you, I, I put it like into a context of uh, the strategies for networking is first of all, we choose which networks are um, adding value to us that we learn from and we can add value to. So um, we always look for networks that have uh, uh, an illegal element so that if you have a business and you want to know how, um, how things are, um, are, are, are done in your country, you need to have a legal entity like Chamber of Commerce, Department of Economic, somewhere you can learn from there how to do your business right. The second network group that I always suggest to people to be part of is business group because you, even if they are in different industry, you can learn a lot from other people in business and you can incorporate it in yours and it becomes more innovative. The third group is quality groups because a lot of people don't know much about quality and it's important that you keep the standards high up also to build barrier for your competition. But also the quality standards are important for you to enhance and improve and to have a common language between you and your team when you talk about um, uh, things to improve in your organization. You also can learn from other industries of their processes and how they improve it. And when you apply it to your industry, it might become very innovative in your field. Uh, so these are some of the networks that I suggest, other than the entrepreneur and mind-like network, because these are important for you as a person. But for an organization, you need also to incorporate your employees in the networking process, because it's much more powerful and impactful to have 10 people advertise, you know, marketing you instead of having you to do everything by yourself. So we train our people to sit. We have standard operating procedure for um, establishing this relationship with the public and um, a network means not only to be there to participate but it's more important to benefit from that network to grow your business to scale it and to meet the right people that you need for your um, enterprise okay wow thank you so much Eva. <laughs> that that was extremely helpful to me I never actually thought of breaking it down that way in fact I never thought of joining a chamber of commerce until one week after that um, in an attempt to deepen their board, so they had only they looked around and there were twelve men in the room, and so they decided to add more women. But it never occurred to me to even join one, and there's so much value coming to me. So a legal, a legal network, a business network, a quality network, then something for life and entrepreneurship. So thank you very much for that point, Heba. Um, we have Rain joining us now. Hi, Rain. Welcome in. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry. I was late. Oh, it's fine. We're just happy that you could join. Um, so could you do a quick introduction of yourself, your organization and your vision? So I'm Ren Abbas, uh, CEO of Spikatech. Spikatech is an academy. Uh, we teach kids and teens how to produce their own video games. So as a way to shift kids from digital consumers uh, to producers. And uh, so uh, my vision, I want to, to reach all the kids in the world because I saw what I'm changing in kids, especially they are doing video games, their biggest passion. 
And um, uh, so I, why I want to reach all the kids in the world? Because in our academy also we're changing all kinds of kids, rich, poor, with challenges, uh, uh, spoiled kids. Everyone is changing to really uh, producers and more productive and less uh, digital uh, and more creative. So uh, we, we, we maybe we also we are um, recapping what's doing, what's going on in the education system because it's really bad. Uh, so it's uh, less creative. So we are, we are really changing kids uh, for better youth and better future, maybe uh, producers, maybe gamers, anything. They will be better. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. There's a strong recurring theme in this group about, you know, around education and children and, well, brains. So, <laughs> so this is very exciting. Um, maybe I don't mind if I hope you don't mind if I put you on the spot right away. We've all sort of spoken around how we get support in this along this journey of entrepreneurship, which tends to be so lonely. So what sort of support networks we have, who sort of keeps us afloat when times are tough. So back to you, Rain. Oh, you're still on mute. Sorry, you have to unmute your mic. Sorry, Rain, we can't hear you. Can you hear me? You're mute. You're muted. Okay. Okay. Now, so now oh wait. Okay. You're, you're can you hear me now? now? Yes. Okay. I can hear you now. Yeah. So, what was the question? Because I didn't hear it. Oh, yes. The question was on this lonely journey of entrepreneurship where you're very often by yourself and you have to make tough decisions. Um, how do you get support? What sort of networks do you turn to to support you at those times when things are difficult? Well, uh, you know, I live in Lebanon, so it's really difficult to get uh, support. I'm giving support for everyone around me. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of accelerators here and everyone is helping entrepreneurs, but uh, not uh, the way that I need. So that's why I'm learning by myself, by my own state. And, uh, you know, it's my second experience in entrepreneurship because I have already uh, other company, work studios, we are publishers for games. So I learned from my mistake from the first company. So the support, I'm giving the support for all the entrepreneurs around me, especially women entrepreneurs. You know, I know the difficulties and the obstacles they will get, uh, they will have uh, during, uh, you know, their journey. So I'm supporting in, in my experience, my failures, my success. And uh, I think this is really important. This is, I always talk about that because they always also ask me, I always tell them the same as men, but uh, it depends on uh, where you are living. Here in my company, in my, my, my country, still women should be in this kitchen till now. So after everything I did, my parents think what I'm doing is really, uh, it's not important. <laughs> because I have three kids, I'm mom, so for them I, I need to stay home. So till now, they don't see the value of what I'm doing. So that's why I'm not getting any support. I'm giving support for everyone to really continue and not to listen to anything and anyone else. Oh, wow. then they're hot and they're and, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. So how do you cope? And what kind of support do you think you, you really need that's missing? Because I think one of the best ways to start to even realize how to create something for ourselves is for us to even identify where the biggest challenges are. So what are the biggest areas of support that you think are missing that you think you would have loved to, to be able to get? Me? Yes, yes, back to you. <laughs> you have to do double. <laughs> um, so, uh, why, I think what... I think I would have to, I don't know, um, uh, it's difficult really to know what I want really to have, to have more support. It's really difficult to define, you know, uh, the one, two, three, four. Uh, I, I, I will come back to our biggest uh, problem is we don't have government support uh, at all. 
And uh, this is really important. We don't have the supports. Really, we are resilient. And I'm, I don't believe till now I, I, I founded two companies till now, really, in uh, my country. We don't have... We don't have even a really good internet, so that's why I can't hear you a lot. So we don't have anything, not support. We live in war zone, you know, we are in war zone. So uh, this is, we have a lot of challenges. It's really difficult to define what I need uh, or, to, or what I needed before to really, uh, to, 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 to have more support. It's really difficult. I know we are doing really, it's a miracle that we're doing, even doing businesses well or, especially in technology and education. So uh, it's really personal effort and it will continue like that. No, there's, no, uh, there's no solution for that. That's why we need, we supporting each other, you know, uh, entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs uh, to, to continue. Thank you. I think you've done a much better job than you thought you did in terms of defining the areas where there's a gap. Obviously, you're, it sounds like it would be great there was more support from the government and I share that experience here. I also live in Nigeria and the government has only just started to pay some attention to entrepreneurship, um, particularly when Mark Zuckerberg came to Nigeria about three years ago and then the government realized something is going on with these tech businesses and the smaller businesses. But for females, it is still, you know, the same story. And it's a global problem. In the US, women get funded less. Women of color get funded even We all share um, share that um, that big gap from the government side, even though some more structured companies have a little better support. And I can certainly understand your point there. But it sounds like there's also a strong entrepreneurship network, um, which I do hear quite a bit you know, from my friends in Lebanon. So, yeah. so thank you for sharing on yeah. that. Um, yes, oh, great. So moving on to the business community, I think we'll come to Margaret again. Um, as, as, are you part of any business networks? I think you mentioned having a formal coach, but are you part of any business networks? And if yes, in what ways have they helped to grow your business? Um, someone like myself, I had shared, I had, no, I had never even thought about joining a chamber of commerce, and then now I'm finding there are all sorts of good opportunities that come out of that. Um, so what's been your experience being part of the business community and in which ways have it helped you grow your business? Yeah, for me, it has been um, uh, really important to be part of different networks because we have a, a technology that involves patients. So it's very important to have a network with the hospital so that we can get ethical access to the patient's health. It's very important to have um, access to um, engineering facilities because all the equipment is high tech, it's very expensive. As a, a company founder, I do not have and even my investors would never invest in so many so many equipments so we have a partnership with the canadian um, engineer and national research council and for the business part we have uh, i'm saying all that because i really feel uh, i hear uh, rena's uh, complaints and i was originally born in brazil i moved to canada 10 years ago and i know you know i think she doesn't even know how much support she could have because now in Canada, before in Brazil, I didn't know how much support I could have. Since then I moved to Canada, now I have the Engineering Council offering me the equipment. Uh, I have a collaboration with the Canadian Trade Commissioners. They are worldwide. They know about my technology and they are trying to find connections and companies for us to partner with. And the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. So I think, you know, really spreading the word about what you're doing if you're starting small, it's extremely important. And getting partnership with uh, your, your country, your friends, you know, just everyone there and someone will show up and, you know, will open a door for you. From, from friends that recommend something to the government support that, that we can have here in Canada, which I think um, it's something I never imagined before, but being in a country like this is great. And that's how I learned about the Cartier as well. And, and I believe Cartier will help us um, as all, I hope, networking more and develop our business faster. Thank you for sharing. That's really insightful. So it sounds like we should all move to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold, though. <laughs> <laughs> very cold <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that there's a lot of support there and, and that's a great point that 
for those of us who are outside um, or who are in slightly less structured systems, we may not even have any idea how much we're missing out on in terms of, of in terms of the support that's available. But it's a great first step to even share your journey or what your needs are with anyone. And you're right. So I'm one of those people who's not very good at, at asking for help. I think it comes from, I think you find a lot of women who tend to be entrepreneurial probably have a long history of always being the one to help other people. Hiba had shared something around that as well. You're kind of the mother hen, you're always helping other people. So you kind of get into the mood of not asking for help. But I find every time I have a real problem, a really big problem, and I open my mouth and ask, someone else always has a solution. So now I'm trying to learn to, you know, ask more uh, and, and trust that someone will help you know, with what I need. Yeah. So thank you very much for that. Margaret. If I could add, yes, I'm, I'm also a yoga practitioner. So I mentioned this in yoga class. And I got an investor there. So, <laughs> you know, you Imagine never know. That. You have to talk about your business all the time. All the time and everywhere. Because you don't know who's going to be able to solve the problem. Thank you so much for that. Hiba, do you have any thoughts you want to share around being part of the business community? Because you've done that so well. And the different ways it's helped. Um, I, I, I agree with everyone. I mean, it is important to realize that network is an integrated part of your company it's not uh, it's not an uh, an addition it's not something you do in your part time or it's not something you do as a side it is it should be part of your um, strategy or if you have um, um, uh, you build your strategy in some businesses CSR is part of the organization so um, part of our community social responsibility is to go out and raise awareness and educate the public. And this is a lot of networking. When you are looking for sponsors, there is a lot of networking. When you are looking for uh, 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 selling an idea, like we worked when we started ABA therapy, nobody knew what we are talking about. So it was very important for us to engage with the entire community government, uh, non-for-profit, uh, schools, educators, universities. So your message is depending on the number of people you can reach out. Now, for networking, there are today, there is the digital platform, which we haven't talked about yet, which is a very important tool to you use to, 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 to promote yourself. The problem with women is they feel shy trying to put themselves under the spot. It's, um, it's not comfortable to be under the spot and people uh, looking at you. But today it has changed with the presence of platforms like social media, like LinkedIn, like you can put a very nice profile and it will bring people to you instead of trying to go out and reach out to people away from you. And, and the social platforms today are very powerful. Um, I know somebody who just used the LinkedIn for their marketing tool to, to get business. Now, it depends on the industry. Some industries, you really need to have face-to-face -face with the client, get them to know you, respect you, trust you, and then they become your client. So for those who work as self-employees and they are the one who have to do the job, they need to be out as much as they can. And having a good profile on LinkedIn helped them a lot because it's the message that you send out that will bring people towards you. So it becomes more in more in like in and out. It's not you only going out to seek, but some people will come to you also and seek your professional advice. And today networking is huge. It's becoming global and international. We get requests from the other end of the world, which you didn't expect that in the past because we were limited to network within our home countries and within our own small cities but today you can have a small city somewhere a small company in a very small remote city but have a very big voice internationally because of the technology that is available today thank you i think that's a really great point the international reach and the recognition that it gives um also you know can add a, a lot of value um one of our uh, female focus accelerator in nigeria um last year sent out requests for applications and they got people applying from the u.s I'm like do you realize it's in nigeria they're like yes but because you know the certain particular focus we would really like to come and you know be a great adventure to come for three months so you know the global reach that is possible for our businesses with the unprecedented um global reach of media is is a really great benefit 
So then you can even be part of a virtual business business community. So thank you for that. Um, so we'll come to you, Jenny. Um, and this is one of my favorite topics. So how do we engage the men? How important is it to engage men as allies and as champions? Um, actually, my two co-founders are both uh, male. And I actually find this diversity um, very helpful when it comes to reaching a wider uh, people uh, because we can connect with a wider range of people. Um, I think in Korea, and I'm sure in many other countries, there's still this barrier between men and women. And I feel that when I go to meetings or networking events, I, I personally feel that it's very helpful to go all together. Um, and I think it goes both ways because we have a very diverse group of co-founders. I think it's very helpful for us um, to kind of attend these together and to connect with um, you know, a wider group of people. And that way we can, uh, yeah, we can network. And you know, from there we meet more people. And I think it's definitely helpful. Um, yeah, I think in Korea, especially, um, there were times when I, when I went to meetings and they you know, they feel, they look very surprised when I say I'm the female CEO and, you know, I'm the CEO and I'm female and they're kind of like, yeah. oh, how do you like, how do you do sales? And like, how do you connect with, um, potential clients? Like, don't you need to drink with them or whatever? Um, I'm like, um, if that's the kind of expectation that they have, and, and I'm sure not everyone thinks that way, but if that's the expectation that many people have, I think it definitely helps to um, have co-founders that are male. Um, I hope this changes in the future, and I, I'm sure it is changing. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's, that's my thought. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's a very pragmatic view. So to try and break the ceiling, but also to have, you know, to have that diversity. So if someone feels more comfortable talking to a man and that's who you need, hey, talk to a man, no problem. Mm. You know, the rest, you know, anyone else who's willing to talk to anyone who's content will talk to me. I think that's a really great point. Um, does anyone else have any ideas, any, any more comments around how to engage men or the importance of engaging men as allies and champions and the value of diversity? I mean, what I can add is, um, I, I, I think if you if you present yourself appropriately, um, what I meant is, if you have to have confidence, you have to show that you're competent, you have to show your leadership skills in any meeting. It's uh, people will forget that you're a woman after a while. They will look at you as a human being. So at the end of the day, it depends on. Um, um, how how much experience you get to gain over time to become more um, more um, uh, confident and more tough in your discussion. Um, the general um, the general perception of women is that they are weak, they are mothers, they are not uh, uh, they are they don't know anything about business. Uh, I always face that when they doubt and underestimate you. They feel like you're um, they don't see the brain behind the looks so the, basically what they see is the outside but in order they when once you start to talk it is when they immediately shift into respecting you and respecting your mind respecting your ideas and then eventually they become more trustful to what you are promising especially when they start to deal with you and then they will no longer see you as a woman they will just see you as a business as partner. The, person. Uh, the gender disappear when when they bec when there is a connection when it comes to um, um, uh, uh, cognitive connection. Um, I am a dentist. I started my career in oral surgery. So at that time, 20, 25 years ago, um, um, I was the only woman in a department full of men and. Um, they forget even that I am there and they start to talk, you know, jokes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I have to remind them all the time, excuse me, there is a woman <laughs> in the room. So um, it, it, it's, uh, I, I realized then that if you want to prove yourself, you need to be tough also. You need to show people that you have 
what it takes. You need to work harder because if a man does something, everybody hails for him. If you do it, nobody notices. So you need to be um, going forward with who you are and do things and fight for your rights and, and be able to, 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 to show who you are. Like, talk about it, discuss, don't be shy, don't be, uh, you know, a lot of people feel like they like, don't like conflict, so they avoid the conflict, they avoid the confrontation. But you can't get anywhere if you if you avoid, you should go there and fight. And, 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 and I talk about hundreds of families with children who have no voice, and you have to, you know, you have to break all the barriers and you need to have a voice and you need to have a loud voice also to make sure that your message is reaching as many people as you as you want to to reach. I think that's a very valid point. We have to continue to be confident and to make sure that we keep reiterating that our presence is there. And I have no doubt that if any of these women, any of you women who have obviously done so well in your chosen fields, um, if you step into a room and you start to talk, they will sit up and take notice. But I think sometimes even just getting them to get to that point um, can sometimes require, um, you know, some creative, some creative, um, some creative uh, thinking. So yes, um, Margaret, do you have any thoughts on how to work with men? How important it is to have them as allies or champions? Yeah, I think there are many cultural differences depending on, on where you live and, and how you're seen as a woman or not still. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I think I like people to see me as a woman. doesn't matter, you know, what I do. Uh, as a scientist, I am. Um, a, I don't think people should, you know, stop looking at me as a woman because I'm a scientist or I'm an entrepreneur. I am a woman. I have a mother. And that's the value I bring in. You know, that's the value I bring in at, at person that thinks different mm -hmm. and that can bring a lot of input to make sure you know we have all sides of our society well represented mm -hmm. um and um uh, again i i was uh i was raised mainly with my brothers uh, i was raised in a male dominated environment uh, i lost my mom very early and then um i was in the in the media where most of the people were males but what I learned, you know, from people around the world, doesn't matter male or female, is that people like data. If you bring data, if you bring results, they don't care. You know, it's really about bring me results. And if you show that you can deliver, mm -hmm. uh, they will respect you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if they don't know you, um, there might be, you know, I remember once I met an investor and he looked at me and before I gave my pitch, he said, you know, uh, you should find a male co-founder. And wow. <laughs> at the end of the pitch, this was in San Francisco. At the end of the pitch, you know, when everyone said whatever they want, I went to him and said, you know, without a male co-founder, we've managed to sell 3,000 units of our product. We're in 12 countries, this, this, and that. And we made it. And then he was like, send me your pitch. So maybe we will invest in you. <laughs> you know, you. when you bring the data, people get convinced. Sometimes they will put a barrier before but you have to, to come back. You have right. to knock again on the door. And, and, and I, would say, I don't like the word fight, but really, you know, fight for your space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stake your, stake your claim. Stake your claim, your right to be there, basically. I think yeah, that's a really great If point. you're different, doesn't matter, you know, if you're different, you have, you're, from, you're an immigrant or you are a, a woman or you're a person of color or a different religion, doesn't matter. You have to... I want to give my input and I think it's valuable because. Wonderful. And thank you. I, I, I'm a bit of a tomboy myself. I grew up with one brother, but he somehow managed to dominate my life like he was four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so most of my friends growing up were men. Um, a lot of the men, people who've actually had a great impact on my career were men as well. Um, so uh, and my, I think my first two mentors were men. Um, so I'll, I'll use that to segue to the point around mm -hmm. mentorship. Um, so do you, okay, well, I know that you have a, a coach. Um, do you consider a coach your mentor? Do you have different mentors for different things? And what tips do you have for creating amazing mentor-mentee relationships? Yeah, I have different mentors for different things. Uh, most of them are males because most of the entrepreneurs are males. And so that, that's where we are, right? So uh, we, we don't have many options. But I also have mentors that are females. So 
I have one important mentor, especially for uh, intellectual property. Okay. It's um, it's um, uh, a famous CEO here in, in Montreal. And what I did, how did I reach out? So I really sent an email saying, you know, I'm a young entrepreneur. I'm interested in doing this and that. I really admire your career. Could I come and ask some questions? And it, it really helped. And then at the end of the day, he became an investor in our company as well. So it's, in, it's very important to, to, to find the right people and find the right questions. Usually when we ask for money or when we ask for, uh, when we try to sell something, it doesn't work. Yeah. But people always love to help. And if you ask for help um, and, and they feel we were helpful, we, you know, we, we joined your team. And so, and especially for us uh, here at the Cartier Awards, I mean, most of us have a very important social uh, impact behind us. You know, that's what we want to bring forward. Um, people like to join. So ask for mentors. And I have a, a coach. Uh, it's a, um, a coach for women leadership. And she helped me a lot to deal with um, how to, to lead, how to, to talk in meetings and, and things like that. And then we have uh, this IP coach, a business coach, especially for sales, and one for contracts. Because we do oh. contracts with large corporations. And this can be extremely tough for a small company and having someone with expertise is key. That's amazing. I had never thought about that. So separate from a lawyer, a coach to talk around the issues around contracting and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, I'm a first time um, entrepreneur. When you're talking to companies, you don't even know alternatives. Like right? they, they give you a, a, a position like, you know, we want the deal to be done this way. And sometimes they can get the same thing, but you, you can give something as well. So, um, you know, sort of find the, the middle ground, someone that is creative enough to know the, the legal tricks. And, and it has been very, uh, very useful for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, how about you, Rain? Do you have a mentor or any tips, any tips around how to create a mentor-mentee men relationship? You got me on time. <laughs> I just logged in again. Yeah. I was uh, watching. <laughs> do I have a mentor? Uh, at the beginning of my business in 2008, uh, where we didn't have yet any, uh, we didn't have this ecosystem of entrepreneurship. I didn't know how to, uh, what's entrepreneur anyway in 2000, uh, 2008, so I wanted to start my own business. I had one mentor, yes, she helped me a lot to understand what business is, you know, and uh, it was really personal interest. She was really, I don't know, she was really nice to do that for nothing. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, just what she wanted me to, she wanted to help me. So uh, she, she helped me to understand what's entrepreneur, what's business, the risk, everything. And really, it helped me. The, her advisors and everything still in my head. So it's still helping me until now. But I had this only woman as an entrepreneur uh, at my beginning uh, in entrepreneurship. That's all. But that's why, because I didn't have a lot of mentors, like I said before, I'm, um, I'm a mentor for a lot of uh, uh, startups, students, entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm doing, wh I'm doing what, I'm, what I want to people to help me. So I'm doing that now. Oh, wonderful. So really, really important to have mentors in many fields, in uh, marketing, in business, and financials. It's really important to have mentors around you. It will help a lot, of course. Okay. Great. Hello, young lady. We'd like to meet you too. <laughs> Hi. Are you going to be an amazing female entrepreneur someday? What's your name? Oh, we can't hear you. What's your name? I'm Noor. Noor. Hi, Noor. That's a beautiful Noor. name. Noor is light. Okay, great. Light in English. I got an amazing name. female. Are you going to start a wonderful business that changes lives like your mom did? No, I think she she she's she wanted to be a game designer, so she's already game designer. She's Wonderful. five, 
and she already did her own games till now. Very so uh, she learned coding, game design, storytelling. So I, I, you know, I will not push anyone to, of my kids to be anything. So I think they will decide uh, what they want to do. Yeah, but they are inspired by me. Um, uh, you know, in everything I'm doing. You know, I'm an artist also, so they 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 see my drawings, my paintings, and also they, I I I bring them if I can to my business where so they see what I'm doing. So they are inspired. I think this will help them to decide their their future. I think. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks. It was nice to meet Noor. Sorry, Thank I'll come you. back to you, Jenny. Do you have any thoughts around mentorship? Uh, yeah, I I also have a lot of mentors and advisors around me. And um, from the, the day I decided to uh, start my own company, I you know, reached out to a lot of my friends to meet new people. And that's how I built my network of mentors and advisors. Um, how I developed a good relationship with them, it's, um, I have a funny story. Okay. Um, yeah, right. Uh, so... When we reach out, we ask for help. Um, usually, um, you know, there's we go there with specific problems, and they're very nice, you know, to provide whatever they can. And usually, we don't, you know, we don't pay them, right? It's just kind of like genuine friendship kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, there's one mentor who's actually the CEO of like. Um, Yelp of Korea um, and he's also running his own startup and he is always looking for um, very active users who can uh, provide really good reviews for different restaurants and I love visiting new restaurants and cafes so I always try my best to help him by um, posting a lot of reviews for him on his on his application and that way he really appreciates my effort and time right so I think Whatever I can provide back, I, I try to do that and I try to be genuine. And that's how, you know, eventually we are just helping each other out uh, without, you know, being too calculating or, you know, trying to force it or anything like that. I think that's an amazing thing. That's an, the fact that you, so very often we look at people who have um, gotten further in their career or um, are ahead of us in the field and think, we are the only ones who can get something from them. But, you know, what you're saying is there's actually value we have beyond them just being right. interested in, in helping us grow our business. We can actually tangibly help them and we should look for those opportunities. So that's a really right. good point. Yeah. yeah, I believe everyone has something to provide, right? Like it doesn't have to be something amazing or it, it, it can be as little as, for example, me helping somebody you know, with English, for example, because there are a lot of people mm -hmm. trying to learn English in Korea, like something like that. Um, yeah, I think that's how I uh, look at it. That's wonderful. And that goes back to the point that uh, he, I think, he, was it Heber? I think Heber made the point that um, we shouldn't only um, look to get, or to, I know it was Margaret who said we shouldn't ask, necessarily ask directly. Um, that if we're just trying to ask for money or trying to ask for help, sometimes people are a little bit more guarded. But if you're trying to offer value, very often you get a lot more than you were even expecting, like investments from yoga. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's a great point. So I think I'm down to the last question now, um, which is um, connecting with like-minded people who understand us both professionally and personally can make a big difference to our business success. So we've talked about, we've learned all these amazing things about what the value of a network is and different ways to connect with people. Ask this of all the panel. What, what are the top tips you have for finding the right tribe and building a very strong support network? So how do you identify the right kind of people, the right kinds of networks to get the value out of? So maybe we'll start with you, Hiba, because you're, you're, you're front and center. I know, sorry, I'm just trying to get it in and out. Oh, okay. um, sure, yes. Um, to build a strong network, it means you have to show, uh, uh, cons um, uh, what I would say, um, continually, continuity. Um, so you are consistently there. They see you all the time. Um, I've been in the networking field for the last 25 years. And when we started, we were going everywhere, every event, trying to 
to make uh, acquaintance and you know meet people everywhere. Over the time, you will find that you don't have time to do all that, and it's not every network that you should be part of. Some of them, they don't add anything to you. Some of them are a true waste of your time. So you start to look at who I really want to be with, who I can benefit really by inspiring me. It's not necessarily something you can take. Sometimes just sitting there, hearing the story, it just gives you such a beautiful feeling of positiveness and energy and you come back and you're so happy and you want to spread this energy to everybody so when it comes to to making to making your own network there is one is using what is existing around you which for example uh Raina said she didn't have anything so she made her own network where she is mentoring now there are multiple ways of doing your uh, own network what is you start to be the hub where people come to and then you acquaint people with each other. So you introduce different um, sectors to each other. So you become the glue that glue people together. Then you become indispensable. Everybody wants you because you are someone where they want uh, uh, X. They know you know somebody who knows X. So they would come to you and ask you. And you have to uh, give genuine referrals. So you don't refer someone who's, you don't know or someone you're not sure of you have to refer the ones you really have tried and as you said you made a review in a restaurant that you've tried you trust you know it's good because again trust is very important for networking usually when somebody wants a doctor he asks who do you know as a good dermatologist you always will suggest the one you have tried the one you have known and then when they go and they are happy you are very proud that you have gave them a good referral. So referral or networking is important for you to, to build. If you want to build a strong network around you, maybe you should initiate some of these steps and have um, to become the glue where people come to you or a hub where people come to you when they want referral. The other thing I learned also is that a lot of time people want to refer to you, but after referring you and referring and referring, they don't find anything coming back from you. They might stop and find someone else. So they have to find someone that they also need. And like in your case, teaching English or, or doing something for others free of charge. It also, we what we did is we built a platform for the doctors who refers to us so that all our clients get to meet them and and this is something meaningful for them because they do want to access they want to to meet with the clients they want to also grow their own business so it have to be a mutual interest they have to find something that they can also benefit from so building a network would depend on um, um, the number also the number of people you have in your network but more important than the number is the quality of the people you have in your network what kind of um, um, caliber and what kind of support they can give to the community you are networking with. Again, in each industry, the network would be different. Uh, the, as it depends on your business and how you want to be living that. But as you mentioned in the beginning, men become naturally networkers. They go and they discuss sports and they want to hang out and have drinks. We as a woman, it's very rarely to find many women entrepreneurs. It's not the common thing. It's more common to see more men entrepreneurs. So again, yes, women can stick together, but I would find that even men can benefit from us. There are so many programs directed towards women, but when you look at men program, there are not many. And I have seen so many events and so many initiatives to help women, to grow women, to give them opportunity to be independent. But there isn't anything for men. So also men can benefit from the networks that you can run as a woman. And if you don't look at the gender as a barrier, men and women entrepreneurs need the support regardless of, um, of what field they are in. Again, there are men who make mistakes. They make wrong decisions. They want to um, um, stand on their feet and again, and they can benefit a lot from our experience. So I think always, it's a mutual relationship. It doesn't have a gender. It doesn't have a color. It doesn't have any um, any shape. It's just have common interest of trying to improve and developing and, and give good to the society and to the people. Wow, thank you. That's been amazing. Um, you've given us so, so much here. So for me, I take away be consistent. Um, always be there and don't just be everywhere. Be discerning. That's how I couch that. So, and I think the point 
even beyond the things that you find, you might find if you look at it clearly or closely, are not that useful to you. I find sometimes you may have two or three things that are going to be amazing. But the truth is you don't have the time to fully participate in all three. So you have to be discerning even when it's something that's valuable, but you can't fully participate. So be consistent, be discerning, give high quality referrals, give as well as get, and support men as well, which I, I always champion. Thank you so much for all of that, Hiba. Um, we'll come to you, Margaret. Any final thoughts for us, especially tips around um, how to build a strong uh, support network? Um, I think at the beginning, you know, when you mentioned some, uh, when, when you start a business, I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, it's a great, everyone loves their product. And then when we talk about it, we're excited and we really expect people to come and, and look for it. But I, I want to just give a quick story. I've worked for seven years at McGill, uh, running a facility producing my product. And after I opened the company, someone from the building in front of mine called me and asked for the product. I said, which building are you? And then he explained me the building and said, you know, I worked in front of you for seven years producing this. And you never heard of it. At, inside the university, it was a service for the university. Now I open as a company and then they heard of it. So it's, it's always important to talk about your product to everyone. And, you know, even if you go for a coffee, discuss about it. Always take the chance to, to explain what you're doing. Why are you doing and I'm sure a lot of people, or at least some of them, will be interested either in helping or talking to others, or it will come to their mind, you know. It's, uh, yes. We're not famous yet, but <laughs> we have, at, the beginning, there. <laughs> at the beginning, there's a lot of work to do to spread the word. And then it tips. I find it tips. And then suddenly it's everywhere and everyone's talking about it. And I love the fact that you're living that. It's one of the things I'm trying to do better and I'm really learning from you. I'm going to talk to everyone when I'm walking, when I'm eating, when I'm dancing. I'm going to talk to everyone. So thank you very much for all of that, Margaret. Thank you okay, so, so much. We'll, we'll come to you, um, Jenny. Any final thoughts around how to build a strong support network? Um, for me, because I'm working with um, senior citizens in Korea. I try to uh, go to events where there are a lot of people interested in the same topic because I try to look for people who really understand our mission to employ seniors and who really support our work. Um, and I think at the end of the day, I find it really helpful to consciously surround myself with with supporters and cheerleaders uh, because this journey is already hard, right? Like there are a lot of different um, things I need to work on and I feel very exhausted or stuck at times. And I think it's really helpful for me to be surrounded by people who really believe in our mission and who can kind of um, support us throughout the journey. Wonderful, thank you so much. So people who share common interests, particularly when it's an mm -hmm. esoteric niche sort of area, and then positive people who believe in the mission. Thank you very much, Jenny. And finally, we close with you, Rain. Any final thoughts around how to build a strong support network? Uh-oh. Rain? Rain, any final thoughts around how to how to build a strong support network? You still have your microphone um, your microphone on mute. Oh, unfortunately, she's dropped off, and that's really all we have time for today. Um, so I'd like to thank you all, wonderful ladies. I've learned so much. I hope it's been great for you, and I wish you all the very best. I'm hoping to see you all in San Francisco, and all the very best with growing these global businesses that are going to have amazing impact.